Our lesson today is God's gracious rewards. And our scripture uh, to this text is Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. We have related scriptures, which are Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 30, chapter 20, verses 20 through 28, Luke 13, 22 through 30. And the place is Perea. The time is A.D. 30. Our golden text today is, The man said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. That's Matthew 20, verse 4. And if we could read Matthew 20, verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Laborers, penny a day. He sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. About the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle to say unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man have hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. The Lord of the vineyard saith unto the steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came, they were hired about the eleventh hour. They received every man a penny. And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, these last have wrought out for our own hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? And take that and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine e I evil because I am good? And 16 altogether, so the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. Amen. Amen. Today's aim, the facts, to investigate and interpret Jesus' parable of the laborers in the vineyard. The principle, to teach that God sovereign, sovereignly rewards according to his grace, not according to human standards. Application, to help students appreciate and accept the actions of their sovereign God. Hallelujah. Introducing the lesson, the parable in this week's lesson presents an interesting twist on a scenario sometimes encountered in the workplace. Developing the lesson, the workers hired. That's Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 2. And if you want to gain a sense of context for the lesson, you can also read Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 30, which it tells you about the rich uh, young man. So ripe fruit must be harvested immediately. The householder in Jesus' parable suddenly had an abundance of ripe fruit. So he recruited workers to harvest it. The crop of grapes must have been very good for the householder went back to recruit more workers at nine o'clock, at noon, at 3 p.m., and at 5 p.m. The householder had promised the later workers fair payment Imagine how pleasantly surprised the later workers were when they received a full day's wage. 
for just a few hours of work. This generous action illustrates God's grace. My God. The first workers expected more when they saw how generous the employer had been with the latecomers. Class members will be able to identify with the disappointment of these people. Perhaps someone can share a similar experience. The householder's response. This is Matthew 20, verses 13 through 16. Explain that verse 13 is a key to understanding the parable. The original workers had agreed to a certain amount and were satisfied to work for that amount when they were hired. The householder had lived up to his agreement with them. The later workers had not agreed to, set, to any set amount. They had simply trusted the householder to give them what was right. Their faith in the man had been generously rewarded. God's grace and sovereignty are illustrated by the statement made in Matthew chapter 20, verse 14. God is not accountable to men. Men are accountable to God. God has a right to extend his grace to whomsoever he will. And in verse 15, the householder asked, is thine eye evil? When they said he wasn't right for what he did. Because I am good. In what sense were the complaining workers in the wrong? They were suggesting that the householder was being unfair when he was not. God is not unjust because he exercises his sovereignty in the affairs of people. God is good, and he is God. Amen. So the parable here in the laborers in the vineyard teaches us that what we receive from God is due solely to his grace. The teaching of the Pharisees was that people could earn God's favor by their righteous deeds. Jesus' story demonstrates that God compensates people according to his own goodness. We cannot work and make up for what Jesus did for us. Thank God for his grace and thank him for sending his precious son to us that didn't deserve it. We didn't deserve Jesus and his goodness, his love, his mercy. We didn't deserve that, but God thought we did. But he knew that Jesus was the only way for us to be redeemed. Call to the laborers. The Gospel of Matthew contains numerous parables that Jesus used in his teaching ministry. Just as a preacher will use stories to illustrate spiritual principles, so Jesus used parables to clarify what he was teaching. Many of the parables began, for the kingdom of heaven is like. Hmm. These stories describe what is involved in living under God's rule. God orders his kingdom by different priorities and values though, than those of human governments. The parable in this passage tells a man who owned a large vineyard. At harvest time, he needed a number of laborers to pick the grapes. In Israel, there were always people who did not have permanent full-time employment. These people would hire themselves out as day laborers. If an employer needed day laborers, he would go to the marketplace where potential workers would gather, hoping to gain work. The man went out early in the morning to get the workers he needed to harvest his grapes. The standard wage for work like this was a penny. Could you imagine working for a penny out there in that hot sun? But back then, that was a, a lot of money. It fed the family. So it's a penny or it's called a denarius. And that's what they earned per day. The man and the laborers agreed to these terms and he sent them into the vineyard at the beginning of the work day, which was about six o'clock in the morning. The second shift of laborers, which is in Matthew chapter 20 verses three and four. After a few hours, the man realized that he needed more laborers to get the harvest completed. He went back to the marketplace to hire some more workers around the third hour, or that would be nine o'clock. He found some men there who were willing to work. Instead of agreeing on a set wage for them, the man promised to give them whatever was right. 
Thank God for right. Third and fourth shifts of laborers, which is in Matthew 20, verse 5. As the workday went on, the owner became more and more intent on getting the harvest completed at noon and then again at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He went back to the marketplace to get more workers. Each time he found more available workers to join those already in the vineyard. Which, with these <clears throat> later shifts of laborers, the owner made the same vague agreement that he had made with the second shift. He simply promised to do what was right for them. And then the final shift of the laborers in Matthew chapter 20, verse 6 through 7. The workday in the ancient Israel ended around 6 o'clock in the evening. Just one hour before the end of the day, the owner recruited a final shift of workers. We do not know what these people had been doing, but no one had hired them. They too joined the rest of the laborers. Once again, the owner did not set a specific wage for them. No doubt they supposed that they would get only a small compensation for one hour's work. Nevertheless, they trusted him to give them whatever was right. Compensation for the laborers, Matthew chapter 20, verses 8 through 10. Procedure for wages. The Old Testament law required that the wage be paid on the evening of the day that the laborer had worked because typical day laborers were poor. They had no savings to fall back on. If the owner waited until the next day to pay them, he could be depriving them and their families of their evening meal. Some people worked every day just to eat that night. Mm -hmm. And possibly have something for breakfast in the morning. When evening came, the owner gave his steward specific instructions about paying the laborers. The fact that they were to be paid was expected. The manner in which they were paid beginning with those hired last was almost certainly different from the norm. This was a payday that was certain to be remembered by all the workers. I wonder why he paid the late ones last. Hmm. Payment to the final shift, Matthew chapter 20, verse 9. The first group to be paid were those who had began last. No doubt they were prepared to receive about one-twelfth of a denarius because that would be the proportion rate for their labor. That small amount would be better than nothing at all, but it would hardly provide an adequate meal for an individual and would certainly not be sufficient for an entire family. So maybe that's why he paid them last so that the first could see that I'm going to do them the same way I do you so that their family can eat also. And to show them that we need to be kind to other people. You don't know a person's situation. You don't know what they're going through. So when, when favor is upon them, don't be jealous. Don't be envious. Be glad for them. When the last shift of workers came to the steward, they were amazed at the wage that they received. The owner had authorized them to get a full day's wage in denarius. This was the same amount that those who worked all day had contracted to receive. The full denarius was 12 times what they expected or deserved. The owner had compensated them according to his goodness, not according to what they had earned. The ample payment to the later shifts demonstrated his generosity it was a measure of his grace and kindness to those who were undeserving. But he realized that they needed to feed their family. He realized that they worked as hard as the others, not as long, but they worked hard and they were willing. We have to be willing. And he saw their willingness, their eagerness to go in. And when they picked these grapes, they had to pick the grapes carefully because they could get crushed. So they couldn't just go in there and just snatch them off and throw them in. You had to do it delicately. So yes, that was tedious, but he saw that the last shift was just as eager to do it and willing to do it as the first. And they, he probably thought they said, well, we'll get less, you know, but we're going to do it to the best that we can do it. And he appreciated that, and he showed them how much he appreciated them for their willingness. Payment to the first shift, Matthew chapter 20, verse 10. 
The parable turns from, <clears throat> excuse me, from the payment of the last shift to the payment of the first shift of workers. They knew that the group that had worked for only one hour had received. As they came before the steward, they reasoned that they would certainly receive more. So those that agreed for the penny in the beginning, because they saw that other workers came in after them, they thought that they would get more, but they had already agreed to the one penny. And the other ones agreed to nothing. They just agreed to work and whatever the, the um, owner wanted to pay them, they would accept it. If the last ship had been surprised to get a full denarius, the first ship was stunned by receiving the same amount. The steward gave to them exactly what they had agreed to as a wage, no less and no more. Although in their own mind, they supposed that they would receive more than the wages they had agreed to. That was not in fact the case. Complaint by the laborers, Matthew chapter 20, verses 11 through 16. Charge of unfairness. Now they're saying the man is unfair when they agree to what he said in the beginning. The first shift, shift laborers had received exactly what they had agreed to for their wage. They began to grumble. They knew that the workers who had started later in the day had received much more per hour than they had. To their way of thinking, it seemed only right that they should be paid a bonus beyond what their contract called for. Their complaint was that the owner was being unjust to them by paying those who had worked just one hour the same wage as those who had labored all day. The owner had made the two groups equal. That's great. Equal. One is not better than the other. One had to feed his family like the other. One had needs like the other. To compound the supposed injustice, the first shift had toiled throughout the heat of the day, but the last shift had begun and ended their work in the cooler evening breeze. The first shift's work had been much longer and much more arduous than what the last shift had endured. The earlier workers were offended that the latecomers were treated as well as they. Why is that? Why can't people be treated the same? Why does one have to be better than the other? You know, why does one have to be above and one beneath? Selfishness. Instead of rejoicing for the others, they insisted that those who had worked just one hour had no right to be compensated as the owner had determined. Thank God he was a good owner. And he cared, it seems like he cared about the people because he gave them an equal wage. Choice of grace, Matthew chapter 20, verses 13 and 14. Apparently, the owner took one of the first shift workers aside to talk with him. The charge that the worker had made against the owner was of injustice. So he began at that point. Because they had received the complete wage to which they had agreed, their charge of injustice could not be sustained. The owner had not defrauded them at all. He did not. He gave them exactly what they agreed to. If they wanted more money, then they should have asked him for more money to see if he would agree to that. But they did not. They accepted what he offered them in the first place, and they were fine with that. So he was not wrong. By their grumbling, the first workers were, in effect, saying that the owner was wrong for showing grace to the others. Would God be wrong showing grace to all of us? In reality, they themselves were at fault. By begrudging the grace shown to others, the laborers demonstrated a selfish, evil attitude. There's so many people that are jealous of other people when they have grace, God's grace, his mercy, and we thank God for that. And we as Christians ought to rejoice with our brothers and sisters, you know, and we need to help them as much as we can help them, praying for them, lifting them up before the Lord, and when we pray, we need to listen to what God has to say back to us. Some people pray and they don't even listen to God. They don't even wait for him to say anything. Just sit there and wait. You ever get in your closet and just sit there and say, God, I'm waiting on you? <laughs> it's awesome. Try it. I'm waiting on you, Lord. No matter how long it takes him to come in there, he'll come. 
just wait on him. It's awesome. Jesus concluded the parable with the important lesson the story illustrated. So the last shall be first and the first last. Peter had, had just asked what the disciples could expect to receive as compensation for, was, for, was, for, I'm sorry, for forsaking all and following Jesus. This parable may have been intended to reinforce Jesus' assurance that we can trust in him to be abundant in blessings providing for us far more even than we could possibly deserve. 